Okay, so now, you see, classification of the periodic table, right? Basically, it will be classified under, it will classify the, the elements under matters and non-matters. So these are the two main groups in a periodic table. And how do I split them into these two broad categories? Okay, the keyword is zigzag line. Okay, so you just need to draw the correct zigzag line. And in fact, okay, it looks something like the red line here. Okay, and you go horizontal, then you go down, then you go horizontal, you go down. And instead of seeing this as a zigzag line, some of my students, they like to see it as a staircase. Why? Can you see that it looks like a staircase? Then you can slowly jump down. One, two, three, four. Okay. So either a zigzag line or a or a staircase. And later on, okay, I will show you exactly how to draw this zigzag line. Okay. So now at this point of time, this zigzag line basically it splits up the elements into matters and non-matters. Okay. Then there's one question. My student will ask me, uh, sure, I draw this uh line already, but I find that there is one there is one element. Okay, which is floating in the center. Okay, it's hydrogen. So this line is right in the middle. So so is it on the left side or on the right side? Okay. So guys, I can tell you hydrogen we can find in our air, right? Okay, so hydrogen, if it's in our air, is it a matter or no matter? Of course it's a no matter. So hydrogen will go here. Okay. And in some periodic table, the hydrogen element it will not be placed in the middle, it will be placed right at the left top corner just like this okay so this element here is actually hydrogen and of course it's also non-matter okay clear about this okay then we can move on okay we know that there are columns in the periodic table so each vertical column we do not call it column okay we give it another name in chemistry we call it group okay and each group number is reflected at the top of the periodic table okay so every group it has a number that is allocated to it. Okay, so the first column we call it group one. Okay, on the periodic table, can you see that on top there is this uh, Roman representation of one? Okay, so this is called group one, and then you move to the right, it will be group two, and you have group three, four, five, and so on. Okay. So elements they are placed in the same group for a reason. Okay, because they have the same chemical properties okay same chemical properties what does it mean okay meaning they will undergo the same type of chemical reaction okay and for example if let's say if let's say um, this element in this group it will react with acid so if you take the next element Okay, it will also react with acid. This is what I meant by same chemical properties. So they'll react the same way. Okay, and take note, each group, okay, they have their own unique properties. Okay, so group one, okay, basically, all the elements in group one they will probably react with let's say let's say water. Okay, and then group two, they have another set of unique property, and it will differ from group three. And so every group they have their own unique properties okay clear about this next okay we know that uh horiz we know that vertical column is called a group so horizontal row okay in a periodic table is called a period okay so the periods they are numbered from the top down okay so the first the first row okay of course it will be period one then the second row period two and so on Okay, and as you go from the left to the right of the period, okay, it shows you some trend. Okay, and trend number one. Okay, we know that when we draw the zigzag line, right? Okay, draw the zigzag line. The left side are all matters. The right side are all no matters. So as we move from the left to the right, okay, we see a gradual change from matters to non-matter. Okay, so. To fill in the blanks, okay, as you move from the left to the right, okay, it shows a gradual change from matters to non-matters. Okay, take note.